Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on RAID. Let's get going. Well hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. Alright, well uh, let's hop in. This video is going to be specifically focused on RAID. So what we're going to do in this video as a whole is we are going to show you the different options in, of uh, compatible RAID for your R430 server, we're going to put up a chart that actually compares them as far as the different RAID levels, if it has cache, if it's hardware, the PCIe version, all that good stuff. Then we're actually going to physically install the RAID to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to install it. And then afterwards, we're going to configure RAID 5, which is pretty much the same as if you're configuring RAID 6 or anything else, but we're going to show you the steps to actually configure your RAID. So we're going to do a whole bunch on this video. All right, I have my EST gear on. We are safe to handle the parts. So I laid a bunch out for you, but let's just go ahead and hop in and then we'll point them out as we go. So first off is a software RAID. So of course we can't feature it here. That's your S130 onboard software. It's going to have RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, and 10. There's no cache, of course, because it's a software RAID. It does not support SAS. It can do up to 6 gigabit per second for SATA and the PCIe is not available. And of course it's a software RAID. Next up is the HBA330. Now the HBA330 is technically a pass-through, so there's no cache. It's going to do drive speeds of 6 for SATA and 12 for SAS. It's a PCIe 3.0 and it is our first hardware RAID, even though it's not technically RAID, it's HBA. Next up is our H330. H330 is going to be 015. 10 and 50 for our rated levels. There's no cache as you can see and it's going to be 6 for SATA, 12 for SAS, PCIe 3.0 and it is a hardware rate of course. Next up is our H730. Now the H730 is going to be RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60. This is our first cache RAID and it's going to have 1 gigabyte for cache. It's going to be 6 gigabit per second for SATA and 12 for SAS and it is PCIe 3.0. Next up is our H730P. The big difference between the H730P and the H730 is the cache. So it's going to be the exact same RAID levels, 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60 but there are two gigabytes on your cache. Same drive speeds of 6 for SATA, 12 for SAS, PCIe 3.0 and hardware of course. Now this back here is just a PCIe version of our H730. I wanted to lay this out so that you can see what the PCIe version versus the mini mono is. The main PCIe version that we actually didn't have to, uh, uh, to show you right now was the H830 which is compatible and it will only come in PCIe whereas all of these will come in PCIe or mini mono and the H830 will only come in PCIe and it's going to be RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50 or 60, 2 gigabytes for your cache, 6 for SATA, 12 for SAS, PCIe 3.0, and it is a hardware RAID. So now what we're going to do is actually show you how to install your Mini Mono, and we're going to install our H330, and then we're going to configure RAID 5 right after that and show you step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how to do it. All right, so now we're going to install our H330. This is all you're going to need is your Mini Mono and a Phillips head screwdriver. So let's just go ahead and put these to the side. Make sure your latch is unlocked, pop the top, and you are in. So this is going to be pretty easy overall as far as the installation. There is a carved out section for your mini mono as we mentioned. So we are going to remove our air baffle. And you can see that there is uh, your, your perk cable is uh, installed-ish. It's not really installed, but it's, it's hooked into these. Uh, black pieces right here so we're going to actually need to pull this out and sometimes this can actually be a little bit tough it's not that hard but you need to pull it out to make sure you get it out and then we're going to install our actual mini mono so one of the things that you will notice on the back here and it might be tough to see on the camera but there's these two little black pieces that kind of come up and they come out you're going to need to take your PCB board the green PCB board and stick it under that but at the same time there's a flat black piece that you have to lay it on top of so it's a little kind of carved out section it's, a, it's not hard to get into but it might just take a little uh, maneuvering if you're having trouble but you want to make sure it's on the top of that and under these two pieces at the same time so what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're going to slide this in and when you slide this in there's two holes when you come down that are perfect for uh, the little screw holes that this will go into. So now we're going to just 
put our perk cable back in here and line up the screws and that's where we get our Phillips head and just screw it in. So really you can see it's a pretty easy process overall. Uh, it's not a difficult one. Now I do need to push down a little bit to get the screw to go in. There we go. Okay, so now we're good and it's in there. So you could tell it took me pushing down a little bit uh, because the screw wasn't wanting to catch the actual uh, threads. So you might have to just push the screw down a little bit and you do need to be careful because you don't want to accidentally strip the screw. So just push down a little bit, make sure that the cable's pushed down. But again, it's a pretty easy installation as a whole. And if you also need to install your cables uh, or your perk cable, you're just going to run it through right here and just make sure it goes under this black piece and then you're going to plug it in up here. So again, overall, it's a, it's a pretty easy installation uh, to do as a whole. So now what we're going to show you how to do is to configure RAID 5. Hey guys, it's been with Cloud Ninjas and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to configure RAID 5. You're going to want to make sure that you have a RAID controller installed into your server. Scott showed you how to do this beforehand, so go ahead and follow his instructions. And then once you've installed a RAID controller, you can actually go ahead and configure RAID 5. Um, and not just RAID 5, you can configure other RAID levels as well, but specifically in this video, we're going to be going over RAID 5. You also want to make sure that you have a minimum of three drives installed in order to configure RAID 5. Um, this is something that's specific for RAID 5. RAID 0 and RAID 1, they have different minimum drive requirements. So go ahead and research the drive requirements for the desired RAID level that you are looking for, and then just make sure you have that number of drives installed. And if you want to install more than that minimum, then you're more than welcome to. But specifically for this video, you're going to want to need a minimum of three drives plugged into your server. So in order to get started, you want to go ahead and boot up your server. And during post, you wanna go ahead and press F2 so we can go into system setup. Once in system setup, go ahead and scroll down to device settings. Once we're in device settings, you wanna go ahead and click on the option that represents our RAID controller. And inside of this menu, we can go ahead and click on configuration management. And then we can click on create virtual disk. Once we're in here, we can go ahead and select our RAID level. So like we said earlier, we're going to go ahead and do RAID 5. We're going to leave unconfigured capacity unchecked, and then we're going to select select physical disk. We want to go ahead and change the media type to both and then apply those changes. And then down here, we want to select all three of our drives, and then we want to click apply changes. Now we just want to go ahead and click OK. And then we can scroll up and then click Create Virtual Disk, then click Confirm, and then Yes. Then we can just go ahead and click OK again. So really what that was saying was that, hey, if you do this operation, if we create this virtual disk, it'll erase all the data that is on, that, on those drives. So if you're okay with erasing the data that's on these drives or those drives have no data at all, then you're all good to create the virtual disk. Now once that's done loading, there's only one step I like to take just so I can make sure that everything was done properly and that creating this virtual disk did indeed work. So we wanna go back to that main menu and then go to virtual disk management. And here we can see where it says virtual disk zero, RAID five. So this is that RAID five array that we just created. So as you can see, it did indeed work, and we have successfully configured RAID 5. If you found this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, whether it's Dell, HP, Supermicro, Cisco, um, we have plenty in stock. We also have AMD Ryzen servers, AMD Epic servers, Intel Xeon scalable servers. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Take care, guys.